Hey guys, Yazi here. Um, for once, I thought I'd do a proper video on how to play Rhino and dominate your local areas or your metas in, within your area. Um, this is going to go over the correct way to play Rhino, um, the different methods that you can go to get momentum in your game, and to basically shut down each hero. Um, and in the future, I'll be doing individual videos with four individual heroes. So, if you've never played Rhino before, he's a very defensive but offensive hero and mainly revolves around um, messing around with your opponent's hand and getting momentum off that. One of the big things about this game is if you defend with the wrong card um, or have the wrong card to defend with for a time, that will actually end up giving you the game or giving your opponent the game depending on the situation. So Reinar is able to do this of course with his intimidate um, packages and everything where your opponent doesn't want to defend with a certain card. Um, especially with Tales of Aria right now where all the fuse mechanics are relying on fusing off a certain card it is very easy to hedge forward by being able to, able to intimidate. I personally think that Reinar is the main contender for this meta, uh, mainly as an anti-meta uh, option in, compared to Prism, because I feel like Prism is just on the top level, but Reinar is able to deal with Prism very well, and um, also deals with a lot of these new fuse mechanics. So, well, I'll start off with, if you haven't seen my video, on my deck list, I'll post it below and I'll just put it in the FabDB link. There's only one change I've made to this deck so far um, since that video, and that was by cutting Snag because we don't need Snag anymore and putting in Bonehead Barriers. I'll explain the Bonehead Barrier choice, but um, right now in the meta, right now, it feels okay enough to run this card. So, alright, we'll start off with the equipment. So, Most games, you will be running a very defensive package on a Skullcap, a Tunic, Goliath Gauntlet, and Scabs. Personally, I do not find a lot of luck with using Gambler's Gloves, and mainly just feels like a cop-out, so I do not run it with Rhino. Once you start to understand to not use Gambler's Gloves and build your deck around just by getting the momentum off Rhino, you don't need Gambler's Gloves. If you want to use it, you can, but I feel like Goliath Gauntlet is a very heavy option to use because it will make that your opponent is always being played less with two less life. So, one big thing about Rhino is that you need to be learn you need to learn how to use Romping Club and Claws within the same deck. I've said this multiple times, but the main reason why is because with certain matchups, you need to go aggressively, and in certain matchups, you need to go defensively. If your deck can tailor to both, then you can switch up your deck whichever way you want. Um, so, against aggressive, uh, defensive heroes, you will be using claws. So, um, this is heroes such as Bravo, sometimes Dorinthia, um, or Old Time right now as well. But most of the time, you will not be using your game, but your mandible claws. More than often, you will be running Romping Club because Romping Club is swinging for four and off most attacks by that by playing a barraging beatdown and just swing is usually enough for this certain meta. So if you are versing someone who is um, a bit aggressive, so like let's say Lexi right now, you will be using your Romping Club. Uh, Prism, it is 50-50. I have found a lot of success by using Mandible Claws. Most of the time, I am playing Romping Club though. Um, along with your Skullcap Tunics, uh, Goliath Gauntlet, and Scab Skin Leathers, you have your Null Rune Arms for like uh, Viscerai against Briar right now, and then you still have your Skull Horn. I personally still respect Wizard, even though they aren't topping right now. Um, you, 
if you're going into a large tournament of let's say eight rounds you do don't want to be caught off guard by a wizard and that's why i always still respect them at the end of the day and it is only one slot so yeah why not run into skullhorn um so usually against um all your other heroes that deal arcane damage it's just you know gloves um we need the extra health for the skull cap um, and also helps you with like C and C turns and everything. All right. One of the things about Fiend or Spring Tunic, which is amazing with Reinar, most of Reinar's good attacks cost two. So let's look at the package that I use to hedge forward most games. So you've got three Pulping, you've got three Breakneck Battery, and your Swing Fist Think Later. If you're able to resolve these cards more than often during a game, you will win the game. One of the better cards is Breakneck Battery, because what you want to do is you want to have nothing in Arsenal or have a good setup, be able to Arsenal this card, be able to pitch a blue card, discard a six attack, and then use the resource from Fire or Spring Tunic to swing with club for five. This, even though it sounds like a very far-fetched way to play and uh, doesn't sound that intimidating, this by far is the way you should be playing right now. If you weren't playing Breakneck Battery and Pulping and Swing Fist Think Later, you will find your deck will be forced to roll Scab Skin Leathers a lot more. This enables you to be able to just rely on scab skin leathers on the pinpoint uh, situations that you need it. So rather than relying on scabs, you've got your extra go again cards that will give you your extra momentum to chip down your opponent, to make them block with the wrong cards, and then win off that. Um, an amazing card that I've found was Swing Fist Think Later in red. The reason why is because this honestly feels like a mini alpha rampage, but deals two different instances of leak damage. Um, just by putting this in Arsenal, or if you have a good turn, you can just play it, pitch a blue, discard a six attack, and then swing with Romping Club. Um, there is one other option, or well, one other card in this deck that works like this, which is um, Barrage and Bighorn. This is a worst case scenario out of all these uh, three different cards. So typically you don't want to use this card, but this is your backup in case you weren't ever able to get to these. All right. So now that you've got your main hedging forward cards, I will go on to the main attacks. So the reason why I prefer uh, Goliath Gauntlet is because it's only good for one-time use and the best one-time use is Command and Conquer. I like Command and Conquer, um, everyone does, it's a six attack destroys their arsenal, but when you're able to do Command and Conquer and swing with, the, uh, with Goliath Gauntlet, this is threatening two extra damage, um, a good early game or late game. I will rarely ever use this on anything except for Command and Conquer. The only reason why I play two is because I want to fill my deck up with a lot of root cards rather than just filling it with a bunch of generic six attacks. You can bump it up to three, but I've noticed with consistency with um, your barraging beatdowns or your oh, what's the other card? or your blood rush bellows. You would prefer to just limit the amount and that's why it's at two. It's also very good at two because you know it's a lot cheaper. You then have your three massacre. Massacre is a great card but it's better as a card as an attack these days rather than being used to discard. Of course when the situation comes up discarding this card is amazing but being able to swing with the card, such as Swing Fist Think Later, Pulping, um, or anything else that discards, 
This swinging for eight with Intimidate is a very, very, very strong card. If you aren't comfortable with putting the extra money towards uh, Massacres, uh, these may be spiking in price soon. Um, Smash Instinct is another option you can do. Even just by swinging with Massacre for six is still okay. It is still six damage for two cards. Um, most of the time, you want to just swing with your Romping Club if you have two cards, so you can Arsenal card. But there are a lot of situations where you can only be forced to like push damage with the Massacre on its own. Um, this goes along with Beast Withins as well. Your Riled Ups and your Smash Instincts Yellow. It is okay to swing with these cards. Um, a lot of people will try and to, you know, not uh, attack with them and just rather just pitch them all the time. But if you're able to push that extra damage, it's always good to use it. Of course, we have Alpha Rampage. Um, most games, I don't actually play a lot of Alpha Rampages. It does come up a lot, of course, but usually by using a um, swing fist think later or a pulping or um, breakneck battery you would prefer to use those cards this is three cards for only nine damage while all those other cards is roughly around 11 cards uh, 11 damage for three cards that's why i prefer to usually use alpha rampage just a little bit of a hedge to try and get them to block with certain cards. Um, of course, you can use a, um, a Barrage and Beatdown before this, so they are forced to only block with one card. Um, but mainly disrupting their hand is the main thing that you should be going for. And then you have uh, three pack Hunt. The pack Hunts are mainly here just because they're a six attack, they do have Intimidate, and they do come up quite a lot. I'm very big on defense reactions. Um, it feels very slack that not a lot of people are respecting what defense reactions can do. So that's why I run three, three, and three. A lot of the times, um, a lot of the times the game comes down to whoever has the most life at the end of the game wins. So if you're facing someone who um, He's playing a bit more aggressively or a bit more tempo-y. Having the extra defense reactions are always what you should be using. So the defense reactions, I would say is a must. Um, the Springboard Somersaults are of course an option that you can use. I prefer them because you can just swing it with Romping Club. Um, but arsenaling them as well is pretty good. So, and of course, you got your blues, um, and then I think my sideboard cards. So, Boneheads, one E-Pot, one Gorgonian Tome, two Arg Smash, and then one Tear Limb from Limb. The main reason why we have Tear Limb from Limb in here is because we do have the Sick Blows and the Fate for Scene, so we are able to hedge forward on being able to see what the top card of our deck is. And the Gorgonian team, of course. So, how have I been able to do so well with what was considered one of the worst heroes last set? It's all within the deck building and knowing your matchups. I usually tend to only stick to a 60 card deck when I verse people, so I can see all the cards whenever I want to see them. So your main package is all these cards. These ones you don't need. And then from here, you get to decide what you need to use against your opponent. So, I think this is roughly 55 cards off the top of my head. Let's say you want to be versed, you are versing someone who is more aggressive, so you can't. Um, rely on getting momentum through uh, through aggro. This is a situation where you would cut Gorgonian Tome 
but still play a 60 card deck. You play E-Pot, because there'll be a lot of times where you need to defend. You put your um, Arg Smashes in here. Because they are yellow, they do defend for three, and they tear limb from limb. If you're able to set up a tear limb from limb, keep it in Arsenal, play Faith for Scene, look at the top card of your deck, um, and using that off the e -pod. Um And within those matchups as well, you are going to be playing Romping Club rather than using your Mandel Claws. Now let's say you're playing a hero who is a little bit aggressively, but they don't have any on-hit effects. This is a situation where you don't need to run um, Springboard Somersault because you don't need the extra blocking. That's where you can risk to use Pulping. Pulping is one of the harder cards to use because it doesn't block, so it always has to be a setup card. It is random, so you are like relying on the top card of your deck. Usually I don't like to play this card, but by having the dominate, by having the go again on this card is definitely something you should use. Now, this deck is very sided towards Romping Club, but if you are versing a Bravo, Mandible Claws is the way to go. You need to force damage as quick as possible. As much damage as you can do as quick as possible means that they need to defend quicker, um, like defend with more cards, um, and make sure that they don't get into the late game. Um, but that's where your Blood Rush Bellows comes into effect a lot, um, and your massive um, Barrage and Beatdown turns. So, while we're here, Sand Sketched Plans is a card that I have been had a lot of issues in the past with. Sand Sketched Plans, it always feels like you want to search out a certain card, but you might hit it or you don't hit it. But what this card is, in my opinion, is so that you can swing with Romping Club and an attack. So usually when I um, search with Sand Sketch Plans, I'll have either a three card or a four card hand. I will arsenal it for the turn, play it for the turn, and search out one of these three cards. So, more than often I will be searching pulping if I'm versing someone who is um, defend, uh, uh, offensive but they don't have a lot of um, on hit effects. Your Breakneck Batteries is the main option you want to go for, but usually you don't have the extra card in your hand to um, attack with this and your club. But the main card that I usually search off it is Pack Time. This is basically Pulping, but without the random effect on top. Um, and because we don't need the extra go again, we have the sand sketch plans. Um, we just swing with these two here. So, these are a very effective ways to win, but it's all about setting up. So most of your turns, you are just relying on tunic triggers. So every single turn, you either need to defend so let's say defend with a few cards and swing with club. You get this stack to three, and by that time, you would have been able to set up a Command and Conquer from Arsenal, or a Breakneck Battery in Arsenal, or even um, Swing Fist Think Later, or a Alpha Rampage. That's where the Tunic triggers mainly come into effect. So you usually have one turn of big blocking, you have one turn where you want to kind of set up for a uh, final spring tunic, and then you'll have a turn to swing with your tunic trigger and by swinging with weapon as well. I know this is a little bit uncoherent, but the, this, this, this is the way Yazi's brain works when it comes to decks. Alright. Um, so, this meta right now, as I have stated, 
no one likes to defend with two cards from their hand. A lot of heroes um, rely on fusing, a lot of heroes rely on extra cards for extra momentum, um, or there's just cards that only block for two. So, simply just by playing a barraging beatdown and swinging weapon is more than enough just for this meta. In the past, we used barraging beatdowns solely for big combo turns, but now it is simply just play it and then swing. These two cards here, and plus a yellow card to pitch or a blue card to pitch, is 8 damage, and most people will only block with one card. If they do choose to block with two cards, and then this goes back to four, what you'll find is that you will start getting a bit of momentum forward, a bit more extra, um, a bit more extra cards in your hand, like let's say two, two turns later, or um, you're able to set up your arsenal cards. That's what Barrage and Beatdown mainly serves these days, rather than it being a big combo. Of course, you can try and set up with multiples of them um, for the late game by pitching the blues and the yellows early on. Um, but usually just play one out and swing club is all you need to do. I've done many videos of CC um, matches with Rhino on this channel. If you want to see more, let me know. I'm working on a lot more kind of intuitive videos as far as Rhino goes, um, and in the future, Levia as well. I hope you liked the video. Um, it's a bit of a different video for Yazi. If there's anything else you want me to explain about Rhino, uh, please leave it in the comments below, and I'll be sure to make another video on it. For now, that's it, and I'll see you in the next video.